Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let us start this lecture with a thought process, what we do. Generally, uh, although we spend our entire life for seeking external comfort by acquiring gadgets, particularly in modern days, but internal comfort dictates the extent of external comfort. Question arises, how can we achieve the internal comfort? And uh, if you look at uh, previous lecture, we are basically discussing about how to get, you know, comfort uh, and also the avoid the vagaries of the weather conditions, right. And um, if you look at, we started with the basic laws of how to handle the non-reacting mixtures, right like uh, Dalton's law, partial pressure, Amagat's law, and then we moved into uh, looking at only the how to handle or analyze the moist air, because that is the thing what, you know, dictates the comfort level uh, for a person, and uh, then that is the basis of the air conditioning, right. Uh, so, if you recall that we define a term which is known as specific humidity, right, which is nothing but the ratio of the amount of water vapor and the air, amount of, uh, you know, mass of air in a uh, water or vapor uh, air mixture or weight mixture. We call it as also moist air, wet air. So, um, um, and that we had expressed in terms of also the partial pressure, if you remember that specific humidity is equal to 0 0.622 PWS divided by PA, right. That is the thing what we uh, looked at it. Now question arises how much, you know, amount of moisture the air can contain, right? And that will be dependent on the temperature, right? Yes or no? So, we will see as you go along, it will be dependent on temperature. You might have experience, right? If temperature is very high and it is humid, you are feeling very uncomfortable, particularly in this season nowadays where the rain is knocking at the, our door. And then, you know, like we get, and temperature also is quite high. And if it is, you know, you can bear that temperature, let's say 40 degrees Celsius, if the moisture is not there, you know, it is dry, it is not that uncomfortable, you might have seen. So now we need to evaluate basically how much moisture, you know, a air can, uh, um, you know, can carry or um, at a particular temperature. And in other words, you can say what is the capacity of the air to hold the water vapor, you know, that way. So, for that we will be defining a term which you call basically relative humidity. Because there is a capacity of air to hold some amount of water. Beyond that it can't, right. And that will be related to the saturation, you know, point. So, therefore, we are defining a term which is relative humidity. It is the ratio of amount of water vapor in the mixture to the amount of water vapor in the saturated mixture at a particular temperature and pressure, right. So, if you look at saturated, uh, what you call water vapor, you know, what it will could you can get from the steam table, saturated steam temperature table you can use and you can get what will be the partial, you know, like uh, 
pressure of that and also you know from that you can find it out what will be the amount of moisture you know because if the temperature you know you know the pressure you can use as the ideal gas you can find it out so very easily so that is rh is basically rh is nothing but your relative humidity which is nothing but amount of the water vapor in a moist air divided by the maximum amount of water vapor the air can hold at that particular temperature and pressure. So, you know and by ideal gas law I can write down m dot w g is nothing but p w g in the volume of course the molecular weight of water divided by r u, r u is the universal gas constant T right T is the temperature. So, that is from the ideal gas law and similarly the amount of maximum water vapor a moist chair can hold at a particular temperature and pressure can be written at P w s V molecular weight of water divided by R u T. So, if you look at all will be cancelled out you know this will be cancelled out this will be cancelled out and this also will be cancelled out. What remains is the you know is the partial pressure of water vapor in a moist air divided by the saturated water vapor parcel pressure right saturated means beyond that it cannot and that uh, sometimes we call it as also phi I mean both the symbol are same relative humidity and phi right. So, it as I told earlier uh, basically it is dependent only on the two uh, pressure parcel pressure one is the parcel pressure of the water vapor right and other is the partial pressure of water right at saturated condition right. So, in the uh, of the dry air mixture. So, you can relate now the specific humidity to the relative humidity what we can do we will take this you know a relationship that we know that is S h is equal to 0 0.622. Uh, P w g divided by P a and we know that P a partial pressure of air is nothing but P the, the total pressure minus P w g right. And in place of I can write down P w g divided by P w s into P w s I can you know replace that and this is nothing but your what that is your R h right and P w g this I can write down as r h you know is equal to r h p w s. So, therefore, s h is nothing but 0 0.622 r h uh, into p w s divided by p minus r h p w s. That means, you know you can relate this uh, you know specific humidity with the relative humidity right. So, um, you can have that once you know one of them and you know the temperature. So, if you know the temperature P w s you can find it out from the saturated steam table and corresponding to saturated condition right and the temperature. And then of course, you know the atmospheric pressure generally air condition when we are talking about atmospheric pressure this is P is basically atmospheric pressure then you can very, very easily find out specific humidity right and vice versa if you know the specific humidity you can also find out the relative humidity provided you know the uh, you know temperature at which you are working you know. So, uh, in the similar fashion I can write down an expression R h is uh, equal to you know S h into P divided by 0 0.622 plus S h uh, hold the bracket P w s right. So, that is from this relation just I have rewritten you know that is all nothing else more than that ok. So, um, now we need to understand the dew point temperature right. So, what do you mean by dew? You might have observed right particularly in the summer season if there is a moisture in the air right what happens particularly 
in the early morning or in the late night, the temperature will be dropping down. If it drops down, what happens to the moisture? You might have observed, Baba, like in your uh, day to day life, right? You have not seen the grass is having a lot of water, it contains water, you know, in the early morning. Of course, you people are not getting up early morning, not going for a walk or a look at the beauty of the mother nature. So, uh, you are devoid of that, you know, or deprived of that, rather, <laughs> not devoid, rather deprived because of your own lifestyle. <clears throat> On an average scale, I am not saying all of you are like that. So, please change your lifestyle, it is very important because uh, life is more important than anything else. So, coming back to that, that means you will get some water which is condensed, you know, and of course, you need a surface to be condensed and that uh, what you call grass or leaves and other places, you know, you will find. So, that is nothing but your dew point or the temperature. Why? Because in the summer, the temperature will be high if there is a pond or a water bodies, you know, of course, water bodies are receding at alarming rate in not only in cities, but also in the rural areas. So, if it is there, then lot of ev evaporation will be taking place, right? Okay. And if evaporation will take place, it will be there in the air, atmospheric air and we call it basically moist air, right? And that will be condensed back. Come, having said this thing, let me ask another question what are the differences between the evaporation and boiling, which we had seen in the boiler, in the, you know, earlier also steam and other things, pressure cooker, you know, also we boil the water, steam comes out, you know, several places. What are the differences? Any idea? Any idea? No. I am expecting that you should you know, have some ideas. What is the difference? Because all are evaporation of the, or the water is converted into the, its vapor. In the case of your, what you call, evaporation and also in boiling, right? So, then what are the differences? Is there any differences or there, were, there are no difference at all? What do you think? Both are, you know, change of phase from liquid to the its vapor, particularly the water, what we are considering at this moment, right? What are the differences? Let me tell you that it is, I will tell you briefly because, uh, you know, <coughs> of paucity of time. See, the water uh, evaporation always take on the surface of the water level. Let us say in a pond, right? It will be evaporated, right? And if it is evaporated, then there will be, of course, it depends on the vapor pressure, what it is having, and then it will try to nullify that, you know, changes. Because away from that, it will be having concentration gradient, that will be the driving force. And in case there won't, in case of boiling, you know, the temperature on the bottom surface of uh, the wherever you are giving heat, you know, heating surface, right, there will be very high higher than the what uh, will be happening in the evaporation, right? And then the bubble will be formed, right? And the bubble will go up and then, you know, there is a steam will be formed and then that is the boiling, right? You will not call unless bubble form, am I right? Yes or no? But in evaporation, there will not be boiling. There will not be any bubble formation, right? So, therefore, there is a lot of difference, you know, temperature here, it will be higher because interface temperature between the water and the metal or the any other hard surface, you know, will be very high. But here, there, it is dependent on the very, you know, like uh, whatever temperature it is having. So, there are, uh, you know, more subtle points, you can look at it. So, I was telling about the dew point. Dew point, you know, you can think of conducting experiment in your room itself or in your home. So, what you can take? I can take a, uh, what you call a glass of the water and little bit ice on it, so that I will drop the temperature, you know, and stir it. So, I can measure this temperature till the outside of the glass, either it is, a, if it is a metal, it will be good, even in the, your glass, you know, 
or a tumbler, what you call this, a tumbler basically. And the even if you made of glass, you know, it will be having bubble. You might have seen, suppose you take something from the freeze and keep uh, in the on the table just to let it cool down, you will find lot of moisture in the outside. From where it has come? It has come basically the from the atmosphere, like whatever the air will be in contact with the surface of the tumbler or any other uh, container, right? It will be just condensed because it has reached a temperature that is known as dew point temperature, right? Before that, before it reach the water will not condense. So, therefore, we can define the dew point temperature as the temperature, right? At which condensation begins if the mixture is cooled, of course, at a constant pressure, you know, if pressure changes that is, but we are assuming that to be remaining constant. This example, of course, pressure will be remaining constant and you are not mixing it very vigorously, right. And uh, what is the meaning of that? That is basically the temperature of the water, you know, saturated temperature of the water, right, or the this thing at a constant vapor pressure, right, we call it basically dew point temperature. If you look at in this uh, TS diagram, this two phase, you know, like process, you are here somewhere T1 and as you, you know, cool it, so that you will be moving towards that, temperature will be down. At this point, what will happen? This is what you call vapor, uh, if this is your, uh, what you call the saturated vapor line. This is saturated vapor line, right? Saturated vapor line. And at this point, it will start condensing, right? After that little bit, you know, this thing, it will be start condensing. That is the point at which the vapor will start formed, right? No, sorry, the, it will be only vapor, but it is a point at which the vapor will be started condensing, right? So, that point, we call it as a dew point temperature. So, we look at now the adiabatic saturation process, where you know, if it is saturated and no heat being transferred, we call it as a adiabatic saturation point. So, let us consider a that there is a moist air which is entering into this adiabatic saturator, right. That means, no heat is going out here, you know, 0 anywhere, right. And it is having certain temperature right and of course this is the moist air it will be containing certain amount of air and also it will be some kind of vapor it is having some specific humidity let's say station 1 so therefore i am giving sh1 and relative humidity and then when you will come in contact with this liquid water what will happen there will be some vapor water vapor will be going you know like this thing something water vapor will be right carried over by this air and in such a way that it will be long enough right such that it will be giving you the point here that uh, it will be saturated almost or saturated. Saturated means it cannot take more than amount of moisture at the temperature. Of course, there will be some drop in temperature right. Yes or no? Because it is taking carrying uh, evaporation, therefore, there will be some, you know, heat of vaporization has to be given and that will take care. So, therefore, temperature will be dropped down. Of course, the liquid label will be coming down, we will uh, give some amount of liquid here such that this label remains same, right. And what happens to the relative humidity? What happens to the specific humidity at the uh, exit of this adiabatic saturator, what will happen? If it is saturated from the definition of relative humidity, we know which is nothing but the ratio of mass of water vapor divided by the mass of water, saturated mass of water. So, therefore, it is same. So, R h is will be equal to R h 2 will be equal to 1, right. Okay. So, do you find this application anywhere? 
See, if you go to Fatehpur Sikri, right, you have gone to Fatehpur Sikri, the fort, you please visit there. Earlier days, these were very hot also at the same time. They were having this kind of channel, water channels, right, that which will make it cool, the, you know, the king or the queen or the other people will be in comfort, will join, right, okay. So you can see in our ancient time, people may not be knowing that much what we are talking in the class, but they know how to design and develop, okay. It is not only that, you can go to earlier fort, several fort, whatever we are having, you will find a lot of science and technology there. So let us now look at that, how to analyze it. As I told that, uh, if the mixture becomes saturated and in this case, we are giving enough length of this water or allow the water to come in contact with the air which is entering into the adiabatic saturator such that, you know, it will be saturated at the end of this. So then the mixture at its exit is termed as the adiabatic saturation temperature, right? Are you getting? The temperature whatever it will be at in, let us say this is T2, right? This temperature, right, T2, T2 is there already, okay? This temperature T2, then that temperature is basically the adiabatic what you call saturation temperature, okay. So, is it different than that of the your dew point temperature, yes or no? Will it be different or will it be same? So, we will see that, you please think about it. So, we want to analyze this, right. What we will do? We will be doing standard assumptions that is steady flow process change in kinetic energy is 0, so also change in potential energy is 0, right. And there is no sap to work, are you giving any sap to work or some power, no, no, right. So there won't be any sap to work, sap to work will be 0. So what we will do, we will basically do two things, one is your mass balance, other is your energy balance, right. And this is the flow process, therefore, we can take a control volume, right. We can take, this is my control volume, right, okay, this is control volume. So, I can consider, you know, like uh, 1, 2, station 1, 2 and also we are giving some amount of water and generally this water is given, uh, you know, in such that this is liquid is at temperature T2, right that is being supplied and uh, such so that it will be, the label will be maintained. Otherwise, analysis will be difficult and also uh, then it won't be very effective, you know, like because water level will go, then what air has to come in and take it, you know, it will be difficult. So, and uh, you know why this water has to be given? Because it will be evaporated. If it is evaporated, the label will go down over a certain period of time, if you operate longer period of time, okay. So, by mass balance between the inlet and exit, this is station 1 is your inlet, station 2 is your exit. What we will do? We will basically look at this mass of air at station 1 is equal to amount of air, that is the mass flow rate of air at station 2 is equal to mass flow rate of air, because nothing more is added. There is no addition of air in this, you know, uh, through the this port at the station 3 right. So, therefore, that is not and whereas, for the when we do the water balance, right, what is that mass flow rate of water at station 1 plus mass flow rate of water at station 3, because you are giving some water is equal to mass flow rate of water which is going out of this adiabatic saturator. Make sense, right. This is just a mass balance, right. So, we will uh, similarly do the energy balance and that is summation of the enthalpy is equal to summation of the enthalpy at the exit. You know, this is the inlet, you know, left hand side is inlet and right hand side is your exit. And if you look at how many inlets are there here, in this case, there are two, one is station 1 and station 3 and exit is only 1, that is station 2. 
So, by that we can write down this energy balance that is m dot a 1 into h a 1 that is the enthalpy of the air which is entering right plus m dot w g that is the water vapor mass flow rate into h w g at station 1 plus the amount of enthalpy due to water which is entering into the uh, into this channel liquid uh, what you call container right and is equal to the amount of enthalpy uh, which is exiting out from this adiabatic saturator that is m dot a 2 into h a 2 plus m dot w g 2 h w g 2 that is the enthalpy due to water vapor right. So, uh, we will basically uh, club this kind of values uh, in the from the mass balance and then simplify it right. If I divide this thing by m dot a right whole m dot a 1 this will be cancel it out and this is a 1 and this is m dot a 1 this is m dot a 1 right m dot a 1 right. We know that m dot a 1 is equal to m dot a 2 right. So, therefore, this will cancel it out right. This will be 1. Why? Because m dot a 2 is equal to m dot a 2 from this air we have done. So, similarly here also we can write out m dot a 2. So, what is this term then by definition? this term what is this? This is basically S H 2 specific humidity yes or no right. Similarly, uh, this if you look at this will be S H 3 one can say and similarly of course, the here we can say very happily that is S H 1 right and this you can say S H 3 right. So, if you look at uh, from this expression right um, you can get that uh, what to call from your uh, this expression right we can get M W 3 right is equal to m w a 1 s s 2 minus h h is 1 right. Will you get this one? How I will get this one? What I will do? I will just do that m dot a 1 we will divide at m dot a 1 in that m dot a 1 and this is nothing but your s s 2 and uh, this is nothing but your S H 1 right. Okay. So, from this I can get M W 3 is equal to from this expression I can get M W 3 is equal to M dot A 1 S S 2 minus S S 1 and M dot A 1 is nothing but M dot A from this equation 1 right. Are you getting? So, now so, if I divide this equation as I told this is coming and that is m w 3 you know we have already seen that is nothing but your m w s h 1 because we have seen that m w 3. So, if you look at like uh, what I am doing here and this is from equation 3 we get that h a 1 is nothing but s h 1 h w 1 and uh, this m w 3 here if you look at I can get uh, basically I can use this expression here I can get s s 2 minus s h 1 into s w 3 is equal to h a 2 right from this expression plus s s 2 h w 2 right and if you simplify this thing I can get S H 1 is equal to H A 2 minus H A 1 plus because I will take this this side right 
and SS2 I can uh, take to this side, right. So, SS2 SW2, um, oh, sorry, you can take to this side basically, to this side SS2 into SW2 minus SW3. Okay, uh, what I would basically what you will do, you can uh, take this uh, what you call SS2 into one side and then SH this one uh, and uh, then you can uh, SH1 you can take to one side and then you can get this relationship that is specific unit is equal to HA2 minus HA1 into the SS2 in the bracket SW2 minus SW3 divided by SW1 minus SW3. So, this is the expression what you can get for the specific humidity at the station 1. So, if you look at if I know these values right HA2 and HA1 and if you can find out SS2 because we know the relative humidity right and we can find out this HAW2 and SW3 and SW1, SW3, then we can very easily evaluate the SH1. So, uh, because if you look at SS2, we know already that 0 0.62 PW2 divided by P2 minus PWG2. And uh, if you look at that uh, this SW3, what we can say that it is corresponding to the what values? That is nothing but your H W F 2 right, because that is the thing what we are saying at the same temperature it will be saturated liquid. So, therefore, at uh, temperature T 2. So, if you can look at this portion will be nothing but your if you look at H F G 2 at T 2 right. And uh, this way, similar way, I can replace this thing here with the H W F 2, right. And I can also write down this thing, because if you look at this is about the air and I can say that C P is remaining constant, it is not changing with the temp change in temperature. So, therefore, I can write down that uh, what you call S H 1 is equal to C P T 2 minus T 1 plus S S 2 that I was telling H F G 2 divided by the H W 1 minus S W 2 right. So, if you look at if I know this C P values right and uh, that is for a you know air you can take 1.005 kilo joule per kg Kelvin and T 2 and T 1 is uh, if you if you know that temperature right so then you can find it out easily and ss2 you can find out very easily provided you know the temperature right and hfg already you can get from the steam table and these all these values you can get and then we can calculate very easily so if you look at that as i was telling that this is the you know uh, dew point temperature where you know the temperature is uh, changing and there also that thing, but whereas the adiabatic saturation temperature take this path it will be different temperature because the heat is you know being not going out therefore, there will be little higher temperature as compared to the dew point temperature right. It is not going out by that. Thing. So, uh, what we will do? We will see how we can uh, basically uh, apply this you know equations and finding out the various properties. We will uh, take this you know <coughs> kind of uh, an example, we can take an example and look at it, but before that let us uh, ask a question what do we mean by psychometer, because we want to find out this. Uh, the dew point temperature and then uh, what you call 
dry bulb temperature and kind of thing, so that we can find out what is the relative humidity, what is the specific humidity and other things. So, um, and if you recall that we had discussed about wet bulb temperature, that is the temperature which will give you basically uh, corresponding to the moist air, right. And if you, uh, we can have a device for this, like we can think of using, you know, like air here, right, air is going and when you will just put a thermometer, I know whatever the glass bulb uh, thermometer we are having, the, that will give me the dry bulb temperature, right. But if I will, uh, you know, put into a liquid and then of course, this is a cotton or a wick, whatever you use and is moist air. So, therefore, that will give me the wet bulb temperature. Of course, you need to suck the air at a particular velocities, right, so that it will not get affected and then it will be this thing. That is the, you know, laboratory what people use to have a very precise measurement of the dry bulb temperature and the wet bulb temperature, right. And this is known as psychometer because once you know this, you can find out very easily what is the relative humidity, what is the specific humidity, right and uh, kind of things and you can know. So, uh, of course, if you look at this weight bulb temperature uh, depends on the rate of mass and energy transfer, right and of course, the radiation it transfer from the surrounding and uh, kind of things, one has to take care of that. But here it would not be because you are keeping and then this temperature would not be that much so that there is would not be radiation, there is no other heat sources and we will see that this can be done very simply using a thermometers which we will be discussing in a very simple way. And uh, on the other hand, if you compare this dew point temperature with the or what we call um, you know this thing saturation adiabate temperature uh, is dependent on the equilibrium between the two phases, thus is a property of the system, right, okay. I mean, Therefore, the saturation adiabatic temperature is basically the property of the temperature and which will be uh, closer to the uh, what you call um, dew point temperature, right. Or, and for a air a water mixture of a PA, the weight bulb temperature is quite closer to adiabatic saturation temperature, right, weight bulb temperature is uh, closer. And if you look at that is a complex system what I looked at, but if you might have seen these uh, uh, thermometers in, in your laboratory and other thing, there is a one thermometer here which will give me the dry bulb temperature. So, this will give me dry bulb temperature, right, okay. That is the dry bulb temperature, right. And if this wick is there which will have to put moist it like or the cotton that if it will measure that will give me the weight bulb temperature. This you might have seen in the any laboratory it will be having. But however, it may be giving not giving the right temperature for the weight bulb. Say what people do that they will have to swing it, you will rotate it, you know, so that there will be some velocity of the air which will be coming and then there will be some vaporization will be taking place and water and so that it will be heat will be taken out and then uh, it will be temperature weight bulb, it will be saturated, right. So, that uh, this kind of things and it will give you the weight bulb temperature. And uh, let us see how we can use that. We will uh, take this example, let us say a sling thermometer is used to measure and uh, in the dry and weight bulb temperature of air at 100 kPa and the uh, dry bulb temperature is 40 degrees Celsius and weight bulb temperature 30 degrees Celsius and we need to find out specific humidity, relative humidity and enthalpy of the humid mixtures. And keep in mind that this, uh, you know, the thermometer which is rotated, we call it uh, basically the sling thermometer. This is known as sling uh, thermometer. and this is being used to measure that. Now, how to go about this thing? So, if you look at it is given, right, what are the things are given? 
the dry ball temperature dv is given 40 degrees celsius right and wet ball temperature is given as 30 degrees celsius right and of course the pressure is given 100 kilo pascal and to find we will have to find out sh rh and also hm the mixture of the humid air we need to find out enthalpy so how to go about you can say that as i told that uh, this is the sling thermometer but we can assume that you know is a basically saturated adiabatic mixtures right kind of things so uh, if we do that and what is given here if you look at this t1 is equal to 40 degree celsius right and the t2 is equal to 30 degree celsius it is given right and we can find out enthalpy at the basically sh1 we need to find out what is the moist air is entering into saturated uh, adiabatic saturator right so what you will have to find out basically that uh, by considering adiabatic saturator right at temperature is equal to 30 degree right and we can find out the sh1 we have already seen sh1 is equal to cp t2 minus t1 plus sh2 h f g2 divided by the h w1 minus h f2 right so if you look at what is t2 t2 is given this is given right 30 degree celsius t1 is given cp of course you can take as air cp that is 1.005 kilojoule per kg kelvin and we need to find out ss2 this is not known this is not known right we need to find out and hfg2 we will have to find out we will have to find out sw1 and hf2 all those things we need to find out but how to go about them how we will get ss2 let us say because we know that rh2 is equal to 1 right ok that means it is saturated condition at station 2 right rh2 is equal to 1 that means the p w g is equal to p w s 2 that is saturated condition now if i know these things right ok so uh, i mean like we can and that is what is happening that is basically at at what at 30 degree celsius right so, if I know R s 2, can I find out the S s 2, right, I can find out very easily, right. So, uh, let us take the properties of this, because I need to know this, why S s 2 we know is equal to 0 0.622 P w z 2 divided by P minus p z 2. Now, what is this p w s 2 that if I will know this then I can get very easily that is equal to that ok p w s 2 is equal to p w g 2 partial pressure of the water vapor at station 2. So, for, for that we need to use the steam saturated steam table. So, from saturated temperature right steam table at 30 
30 degree Celsius. What we can find out? We can find out all these properties that is P W S is equal to 4.246 kilopascal and which is equal to P W G 2 and H F 2 I can find out 125.77 kilojoule per kg and H G 2 is 2556.25 kilojoule per kg, right? And uh, let us also look at the uh, from the you know saturated steam table at 40 degrees Celsius, right? P W S is equal to that is of course S1 is equal to 7.384 kilopascal and Hg1 is 2574.26 kilojoule per kg, right. So, here I can put these values that is basically 0 0.622 and we have taken that pressure is 100 kPa, right. Generally people take uh, 101325, right. 101.325 kilopascal, but here it is given. So, you need not to take atmospheric pressure, right. And P W Z is basically uh, what you call 4.246 divided by 100 minus 4.246, you will get the value is basically 0.028 kg of water per what kg dry air. That means, S S 2 is equal to 0 0.08 kg of water it is carrying per 1 kg of water, right. And uh, if you look at now, we can substitute these values all the things we know now, ok. Is it do we know? I think I made a mistake this is G 1, right just check that. So, we know this is nothing but your H 1, right. This is now known, H F 2 is known, right. And this H F G is nothing but what? H F G 2 is nothing but your what you call 2556, you know H F H G 2 minus H F 2, ok. Let me write it down. So, I can evaluate S H 1 is equal to C P, C P is 1.005, T 2 is equal 30 degree minus 40 plus H S 2 is 0 0.028 into H F G basically H G 2 2556.25 minus 125.77 divided by H W G 1 that is 2574.26 minus 12577. So, if you do this you will get basically 0 0.023 kg of water per dry air. And once we know this S is 1, I can find out what is R H 1, right. Can I find it out? Very easily, what we will do? We know S H 1 is nothing but 0 0.622. Of course, you can use the other formula, but uh, we can use the, this is simpler one, G 1 minus P minus W G 1 and from this because we know this value this is S H 1 0 0.023 then I can get P W Z 1 is equal to basically 3.67 kilo Pascal. So, R H 1 is nothing but your P 
W G 1 by P W S which is what is P W S 1 what is that that is nothing but your 7 point you know this is this one 7.384 you will get basically 0 0.497 ok and we, we need to evaluate now H M 1 that is nothing but H A 1 plus S H 1 H W G 1 is equal to uh, C P that is 1.005 into uh, 40 degree Celsius plus SH1 we know that is uh, basically 0 0.023 into the HWG1 that is nothing but 2574.26 and which will be equal to 101.2 kilojoule per kg. So, uh, what you can get is basically you know like all these values question arises you know you will have to do all this calculation to find out these properties, but uh, is there any other simpler way of doing that that we are going to do how we can use a chart which is very quickly to you know uh, find out and then we will see in the next class. Thank you very much.